Most people regard Cars 2 from 2011 as Pixar's first bad movie. After Disney took over, Pixar movies were no longer about great and compelling stories, but all about the sweet, sweet cash. But was Cars 2 really Pixar's first failure? I say nope. Toy Story 3 indicates that Pixar's downfall had already begun in 2010, one year before Cars 2. Let's take a look. Don't get me wrong, Toy Story 3 isn't a horrible movie. Personally, I don't think it's a masterpiece, but it's okay. As a sequel, I felt as if it doesn't take enough time for exploring the existing characters even more, or to properly establish the new ones. And I don't really like the Buzz Lightyear plot. Buzz thinks he's a real space ranger. Again. Really. We're, we're doing this again. For the third time. In the first movie, it was part of the premise. The sequel made the same joke, but from a meta perspective. Now it's the same as in the first one, only in Spanish. As I used to tell my boyfriend, the joke doesn't get any funnier if you tell it more often. Aside from that, I think Toy Story 3 is a solid, heartfelt movie. But for this video, I'd like to share an exotic point of view, at last as far as the reviewer scene goes. I'm in Germany and watch, of course, the German version. So the following criticism refers to the German dub of the film, because only here Pixar's starting downfall became painfully obvious. So, at the end of Toy Story 3, everyone is crying their eyes out. I did too, but not because I was moved or touched. I was crying with furious rage, heartbroken pain and deep, deep despair. I was so mad. In fact, I was so mad that I have sworn that my kids won't be allowed to watch this movie until they are 14 years or older. Old enough to understand that sometimes corporate interests outweigh the integrity of a franchise. So what's the problem? There are three key factors. Celebrity cameos, the history of Toy Story and Disney Germany. To explain how these factors are related, I'm gonna give you some background information. Whether you live in the USA, Germany or wherever, it's a common practice for animated movies to cast celebrities as voice actors. With this method, the studios try to expand the target group and get a hook in for the marketing. Okay, so let's keep this in mind for a moment. Then there is the second factor, Toy Story. The first movie was released in 1995. It was and still is groundbreaking and was a huge success. Toy Story is also Pixar's first franchise, with the sequel released in 1998. Back then I thought Toy Story 2 was the best animated sequel ever, until Shrek 2 came along in 2004. So when Toy Story 3 hit the screens in 2010, it was 13 years since the last Toy Story movie had been released, and the audience was familiar with the characters for 15 years already. In the meantime, Pixar had made itself a name for hits like Monsters Inc., Finding Nemo and Wally. So in 2010, when this famous studio would release yet another sequel to their very first franchise, who wouldn't want to see that? Well, Disney Germany wasn't so sure about that. Somebody at Disney Germany felt the need to improve the movie. In the end, they shed on a franchise and a fandom that existed for 15 years back then. What happened? Let's take a look at one of the German trailers. Total, wie ein Kasper. Nie im Leben würde ich sowas anziehen. Nie. Nie. Ich bin auch kein Idiot. Toy Story 3! Jetzt im Kino! Ja. Three guys in front of a white background. Nothing is supposed to distract from them. Each of them holds a toy of the character he voices. I remember that I didn't want to believe that, but it's true. Who are these three dudes? There we have Sebastian Tramitz, actor and voice actor, who, for example, is the German voice for Mali in, in Finding Nemo. Okay, uh, hello, my name is Marlin, ich bin ein Clownfisch. Yes, good man, good man. He is voicing Ken, a new character, so okay. Und, wer ist scharf auf Ken's Traumtour? Super, nehmen wir, danke. Then we have Rick Gavanian, 
comedian, actor, voice actor and voice talent. He's voicing uh, Rex. In the previous movies, Rex was voiced by Wallace Shawn and in German by Ernst Wilhelm Lennig. He has an iconic voice in both languages. But that's not a problem for Rick Gavanian. Most of the time you don't hear any difference to the original. And then we have uh, Michael Bully Herbig. He's a comedian, a producer, director and whatever. His work as a voice actor is amateurish, to put it mildly. In The Emperor's New Groove, I thought his voice work was okay. But after that, it became painfully obvious that he always, always sounds the same. There's nothing wrong with a recognizable voice, but Habig sounds like a duck. And he voices... <gasps> Hi, ich spreche im Film Toy Story 3 den Woody. Woody was originally voiced by Tom Hanks and in the German version by Pia Augustinski. Hello? Ah, ah, keine Panik! Ganz ruhig, ganz ruhig, ganz ruhig! Äh, Habe ich dich erschreckt? War keine Absicht. Entschuldige, howdy! Mein Name ist Woody und das hier ist Andy's Zimmer. Okay, so what's the reason to cast these guys in particular? What do they have in common? Well, these three had a successful comedy show called The Bully Parade from 1997 to 2002, with reruns in 2006. The show consisted of skits with recurring characters. The show was so successful that Habeck made films of the most popular characters. Der Schuh des Money 2, a Winnie 2 parody from 2001, followed by Traumschiff Surprise in 2004, which makes fun of several sci-fi movies, and finally Sissy und der Wilde Kaiser in 2007, Habeck's first animated movie, which mocks the successful Sissy trilogy with Omi Schneider. In 2009, Habeck released his take on Vicky und die starken Männer, in English known as Vicky the Viking, followed by a sequel in 2011. To sum it up, Habeck was hell popular in the late 2000s. So in 2010, Disney Germany decided to attract viewers by putting the old cast of the Bully Parade back together. Yes, Habeck was popular back then, so why not cast him for a minor role or a side character? Why did you have to assemble the whole Bully Parade cast? That show had been cancelled in 2002. People who knew the Bully Parade were old enough in 2010 to know Toy Story from 1995. The only people who might not know Toy Story back then were little kids. But kids wouldn't know the Bully Parade. What? As confusing as it might seem, there is a strategy behind it. It was not about attracting viewers. The cast of the Bully Parade team was a cover-up to hide the fact that Disney wanted to replace the main character's voice. In animated movies, the voice defines the character. Why would you replace one of the main characters after so many years? There are comprehensible reasons, like when the original voice actor is no longer available or passes away. Questioned about the replacement, Disney Germany was quick to explain Augustinski was replaced because he had a stroke. Yeah, that's right, Augustinski had a stroke in 2004, but he was back at work in 2007, three years before Toy Story 3. The truth is, the stroke was just an excuse for Disney. The true perfidious reason for that decision in 2010, Augustinski was already 70 years old. Better establish a new voice for the main character sooner than later. And better take somebody popular. It doesn't matter that the voice sounds terrible. The chart says people will pay anyway to see their beloved characters. Für Panik ist jetzt der falsche Zeitpunkt. Für Panik ist es der Zeitpunkt schlechthin. Ich bin verloren. Andy ist weg. In zwei Tagen ziehen sie um und das ist alles nur deine Schuld. Und du wolltest, dass wir bei Andy bleiben. Weil wir seine Spielsachen sind. Disney had dollar signs in their eyes and planned ahead. Not only Toy Story 3, but shorts and even more sequels. I'm a dubbing fan. I regard dubbing as a form of art, translating as faithfully as possible while staying within the given time frame and taking care of lip syncing. A good dub can not only make a foreign movie good, but even better than the original. But that's a subject for another video. I enjoy a good dub. But Toy Story 3, when I watch this movie, I can only bear the English original. Pixar once put a lot of effort into great foreign language edits. 
But when Disney took over, they just didn't care anymore. When I see the movie in German and Woody starts talking, all I hear is the violation of a beloved character. They're up! I can't watch! Let's get out of here, Kyle! Why would Disney and Pixar. The fact that I have a different perspective on Pixar films, in this case a German perspective, puts me in the position to recognize the symptoms of Pixar's death before it became visible on their products. And when Cars 2 came along one year later, I wasn't surprised. While critics threw tantrums about how cheap and stupid that movie was, I shrugged it off because it only confirmed what has been, had been, has been, on the horizon with Toy Story 3. Cars 2 was the logic consequence, since Cars is Pixar's most successful franchise brand. Since 2010, I don't expect much from Pixar movies anymore. Nothing to be exact. Nothing can heal my broken heart. My huge ears bleed with rage. Whew, that was a long video. I hope you liked that look from the outside. In case you're not from the US, what are your experiences with Pixar movies and their foreign language edits? Did Disney ruin your dubs too? Let me know in the comments what you think about Disney's takeover. Auf Wiedersehen, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren. <coughs> At last, as far as the reviewer... The reviewer. <laughs> So the following criticism refers So the following criticism following <laughs> Fuck So the following criticism following So the following criti So the following So the following crit All enough to understand that sometimes entrepreneurial Entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial? Holy shit. Nein, dafür muss es ein anderes Wort geben. Unternehmerisch. Corporate. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. <laughs>